Hey y'all, what's up? What's going on? Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm showing you my simple cream contour. I feel like this is super important just simply because the holidays are coming. So we're going to have parties and pictures and whatnot. And we want to look good. And I feel like cream contouring is something that is very, very intimidating, which I totally understand why. Because honestly, when I first started doing it on myself and clients, I was scared to death of it. But today, I'm going to make it simplified for you so that way anybody can do it. So let's go ahead and get into it. I already have brows, foundation, and concealer on. We're only going to be using two things for this cream contour. We're going to be using the ABH Stick Foundation. My shade is in Earth, which is the perfect tone for me as far as contouring goes. Contouring is tricky because contouring is essentially shadows, right? And so sometimes I think some people interchange the words bronzing and contouring too much and get a little confusing. If you want to see the differences between the two, make sure you check out my video above because I do a description on what each is and I go into a lot more details. However, when you are someone like me who is a more of a warmer golden yellow undertone and if you take something that's a little bit more cooler or ashier on my face, sometimes it can look super, super muddy. So because we are contouring, I don't want anything that's too warm, but I need more of a neutral tone. And Earth is exactly that for me. It is neutral. So I'm going to be using this to contour today. And I know ABH has a loads of other different shades as well. So check that out. And then this was, I believe it's $25, but I caught mine on sale and it was $17. So this is what I like to use to contour. And we are going to use this Real Technique Stippling Brush. Now, why I like using a Real Technique Stippling Brush for my contour is just simply because the stippling technique is when you just basically press it onto your skin. I feel like what a lot of people do wrong with their cream contouring is they'll put the cream on and then they'll sit there and buff it around and around like that. What happens there is you are disrupting any foundation concealer that you may have down. So you're just kind of swirling it around and it might start to look patchy. So with the stippling brush and by you pressing the product into your skin, one is going to look way more natural. It's not going to look so harsh and secondly you don't have to worry about rubbing around or disrupting any foundation or concealer you might have laid down so with the stick I think what a lot of people would do first is take it and put it on their face while that's totally fine what hap what can happen sometimes if you do that you might get too much product so what I like to do is just take my stippling brush and just kind of rub it on to the stick now after I do that, I have a paper towel down here on my desk and I'll just take my paper towel and just kind of kick off a little bit of product. Also, I might want to get a little bit more on the side. So what I'm going to do is, now everybody's face and bone structure is different. So the way I contour my face, you might necessarily do that. I feel like that is another huge thing that is left out in just contouring tutorials and how to. Everyone's bone structure is not the same. For instance, if someone already has a very chiseled face, and you contour it, you can look strong in the face. You know what I mean? You can kind of look like a drag queen, which there's nothing wrong with drags. I'm here for them, but drag queens make their stuff very, very intense because they're trying to soften and give their face the look of a woman. So if you already have like a very, very strong jawline or prominent cheekbones and you contour it, it can make you look a little strong. Now, if you want the strong look, go for it. But those are just, you know, a few of my tips. So we already wiped here. And so you want to make sure... So fill around for your cheekbone. My cheekbone is right here. So just for good measure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up just a touch more because when you go up a little bit more than where your natural cheekbone is, you don't have to worry about your contour coming too low. I see that a lot. I've done that to myself plenty of times where I will go ahead and lay down my product right on top of my cheekbone. And then once I start blending it out, it drops down. So here's my cheekbone. I'm just going to take it a little bit higher and I'm just going to start pressing the product and notice how I have it on the side first I'm not going in with it flat I'm just laying it down on the side and we are just going to press that down and always check your forward view and your side view so I'm just going to press that down next up just give it a little wipe. Now I'm going to start to press it into my skin and this is just going to blend it out. And you guys see how easy that is? 
effortless. It's not super, super tricky or hard to do. It's just gonna make it so much better. And it just blends more so into the skin. And then just to furthermore blend, sometimes I'll just go ahead and wipe my brush off a little bit more. And, ooh, I took it way higher than I typically do. Okay, cheekbones, <laughs> that's all right. And then we can just continue to blend out. Now let's say if you do get it a little bit too far, like mine did drag down a little bit, I like to take one of my cosmetics one, the one just cosmetics one just <laughs> cosmetic sponges, and I'm just going to dip it into some translucent powder, and we are just going to cut it. Now this is one of those situations where baking is good because it can fix situations like this. Let that sit for a few minutes, and then I'm just going to wipe it away, and boom. There we go. And then just for good measure here, taking a sponge and, whoops, wrong one, need a clean one. Taking a sponge and just furthermore blend that out. And boom, that is one side done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. Well, actually no. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and do my forehead. So if you are someone who has a shorter forehead, do not contour your forehead because it's just going to shrink it dramatically and it's gonna look a little weird. I, for one, have a five head. So contouring my forehead is like my one of my favorite things to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing again, rub it here, and then I'm just going to really, really push this into my hairline again no swiping, we are stippling. And then if I want to look a little bit more chiseled, something else that I will do is I will contour my jawline a little bit down here. And this is just gonna add a little bit more bone structure. Boom. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side of my face really quick and then we'll come back and we'll talk about nose contouring. All right, so I went ahead and did my contouring on this side. Next up, we need to go ahead and set the rest of our face. So we're gonna set it with translucent powder. This is something that I have found that helps. So we laid down a cream product and so now we have to set it. Most people would go ahead and go in with their powder contour over it. I don't do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just set my whole face with translucent powder first because I have found that when I set my contour first with the translucent powder, it's not gonna disturb it, it's not gonna change the tone of it or anything, but when I do that first and then go over with the contour powder, my contour powder doesn't grab as much. Sometimes if you go in with just like a wet cream contour and then throw the contour powder on it, it can grab it and kinda look muddy, so I don't do that. So I go ahead and I'm gonna set with translucent powder first now I'm going to go in with my ABH contour kit. This is a medium deep and this is what I use to contour. So it might not look like it's deep enough, I swear it is. This is what I've been using for almost a year now and I love it. So I'm taking this Morphe M530. I like to use this for contouring and if I'm just gonna warm up my face. Um, this is not the most softest brush in the world and it sheds, however, I just love it for applying contour. So I'm gonna swirl into here. And I'm just going to go over where we laid down the contour. Off camera when I was doing my eye makeup, I noticed that my left side looked a little muddy. I think I put a little too much on. So I just took that sponge and went over it to blend it out. You'll be able to tell more in the outro. It's not as harsh anymore. I'll just take the brush to the side just to get nice and precise. Okay, next up, nose contouring. Not a huge fan of it. It's just not my thing. I mean, if you like it, that's fine. I'm good with my nose. So when I contour my nose, it's just more so to bring back dimension 
to my nose, to my face. So something I see a lot of people do is, well, there's, they, they will just draw lines down their nose and that's it. That technically doesn't really bring the dimension to your face that you need. And also, instead of me doing cream and powder, I'm only gonna do powder just simply because I don't want it to be intensified. Now, if you're someone who is just a gun ho nose contour and you wanna do the cream and then set it with the powder, totally can, but because I just wanna bring back more dimension and leave it softer, I just do it with powder. So taking that same brush and I'm gonna swirl in here. Now, what you wanna do to really get dimension in here, you want to make sure that you are putting your contour powder here and bringing it into that brow bone. That's gonna give you that nice structure and just makes your face look nice and dimensional. So what I like to do is pinch my brush and more so focusing here and going up. And then once I get probably about halfway to my nose, I'll just let it kind of feather off. Boom. So let's say if you got a little crazy with your nose contour and you need to really, really clean it up, I'll just take the brush that I use for highlighting and I'll just go down the center of my nose. And again, this is just gonna help bring more dimension and structure to your face. Also, it's gonna help clean up any areas. And then to just go over and blend out a little more, taking my sponge again, and we're just gonna pounce over it. And boom. That is our contouring. I'm going to go ahead and pop on some blush and finish up my eyes and I'll be right back. All right, ladies and gents, I am back. I have the rest of my makeup on. This eye look will be up tomorrow, so don't worry, you'll see it. But I hope that this simple contour was easy for you. Let me know down below if the tips and tricks are helpful. And of course, if you guys have any, share them so that way we all can learn more. Thank you so much for watching. Keep it simple, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.